Here is the 2025 Honda CRV Sport L Hybrid in meteorite gray over black interior. Last year, we received this trim, giving us four different options now for the hybrid powertrain. And you can still option a non-hybrid with two different trims. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and I'm gonna go over some pros and cons, the differences that you get in the trims and the comparable rivals. Starting in the front, you're gonna have two different configurations, a front wheel drive and all wheel drive that will change the ground clearance to 7.8 inches or 8.2 inches with a standard active grille shutter, LED daytime runnings and LED headlights. That's going to be standard. The gloss black is going to go in between the headlamp assembly and because it's the Sport L hybrid trim, gloss black for the whole fascia so it looks more dynamic than anyone in its class. Because let's face it, the Toyota RAV4 is not going to look this dominant in the front. It's a little bit dated. We've already had a refresh a few years back on the CRV, and Hondas did get some tweaks in the front, so it looks a little bit more sporty, but this looks more aggressive. Underneath the hood is going to house the 2.0 liter inline four cylinder hybrid, and that's giving us a combined of 204 horsepower, which is 14 more horsepower than the non hybrid, achieving 43 MPGs for the city, 36 MPGs for the highway, with the combined at 40 MPGs, which is impressive. Towing decreases when you get into the hybrids though. It's gonna be a thousand pounds. Non-hybrid is 1500 pounds. But wheel design, you're getting the 18 inch gloss black wheel. So it sets it apart from the non-hybrid trim as well as the side view mirror getting the gloss black with the integrated LED turn signals and the roof rims. And going back to the competition, Toyota or Hyundai. Hyundai is gonna have a little bit more towing capacity and you get a little bit of a refresh only on the front portion though. Whereas the CRV, when they did the refresh a few years back, it already made it look aggressive. Now everyone's kind of copying the style, and this is going to have the same platform as this as the Civic, as well as some of the interior components, which is a plus to me because I like the Civic. And now you have an option of three different choices. You could get a sedan, a hatchback, or an SUV. And the styling doesn't stop there. You're getting dual exhaust finishers. Now in a con, these are not the actual exhaust. They're tucked a little bit more so underneath the vehicle, which I've had people in comments say, I don't like that. But then when you're thinking about Acura, you have to make a difference between the two. Standard LED taillights with the reverse camera sport badging with the gloss black, but they forgot to black out the badging for the Honda and the CRV. And because it's a sport vehicle, I think everything should get gloss black, as well as giving us something like a digital rear view mirror. Because this is a 2025. We should start getting a little bit more tech, because that would give you about 170 degrees of vision in the rear. I get it, we got blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, lane steer assist, frontal collision, pedestrian detection, safety's more or less taken care of. Just the more technology that you have because of the times that we're in makes it a little bit more sawed off. Now we do get a hydrogen powertrain this year. It's gonna be coming out in California in the next few weeks, but the sweet spot still will have to be the hybrid itself because hydrogen, it's not sourced everywhere in North America. Power to lift gate starts on the EXL, cargo going into 36.3 cubic feet. You have two little storage nooks right here, LED interior lights with bag holders, as well as a 12 volt charger. Because I'm tall, I can split fold the rear bench in the back. Otherwise, you'll have to go into the back seat to do so. However, you can see it clamps up a lot, so it'd be a lot easier if you just go into the back seats to maximize the cargo at 76.5 cubic feet. The Sport Hybrid adds the 10-way power seat adjustment to the driver. The EXL adds four power seat heated front seats. The orange stitch work is because of the Sport L Hybrid and the EXL Hybrid adds the memory seats. The CRV has plenty of headroom as well as leg space, taking bits from the Civic like the honeycomb that's going to go into the dash that integrates into the air vents seamlessly and they carry on to the driver's side. Bose upgraded sound system is only on the Sport Touring. Auto dimming rear view mirror starts on the EXL. Moonroof starts on the Sport Trim. Leather for the shifter and the steering wheel 
that's going to be on the EXL trim. And a nine inch infotainment screen starts EXL hybrid trim with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, it's wireless. Honda Link, add navigation, goes into the Sport Touring Hybrid, put it into reverse and we get a reverse camera. The trajectory does expand like every Honda automobile and you can change the lineup as well to make it easier for towing. Dual climate control settings is standard on all hybrid. The wireless charging starts on the EXL and you have plenty of room next to it. There isn't any pass through or any sleeve of storage with 240 watts, six speakers. That's going to be standard on the Sport Hybrid. The EXL adds 320 watts and eight speakers and the Sport Touring adds the 12 speakers through Bose. And the key fob for the CRV Sport L Hybrid. Driving mode select, which you have a total of three different driving modes on the seven inch gauge cluster. You can also go through an array of different content for the driver, including the power flow and your audio sound system. It's going to be soft to touch. I like that we still have a little storage pocket there. Opens up into a deep storage pocket. And you have the paddle shifts for regenerative brakes and you'll get the cross stitch in orange because of the Sport L trim. Door panel and dash configuring together and you're gonna get the gloss black materials, soft to touch. One touch up and down for all the windows starts on the EXL hybrid with a medium size storage pocket. For the back seats, this is the way you sit normally. You can recline these back in which I would recommend that. But when you recline it, just kind of hold it because it'll just fall back. And one con is this little seat belt here for the middle seat that has cup holders and armrests. You can remove it, but most people are going to leave it there. Storage is only going to be behind the passenger seat, USB ports, air vents, and the door is going to have the same configuration as the front with about the same size storage pocket sliding into the center. The floor is nearly flat and you have your own feed space. You can share some feed space if you need to, but leg and shoulder space is not going to be too bad. And what I like about the CRV is if you're noticing, I actually have plenty of room here to actually relax on a long journey as well as knee space and headroom is actually carved out for you with LED interior lights. 204 horsepower with 43 MPGs for the city, 36 MPGs for the highway, a combined of 40 paired to an eCVT transmission. And it actually has power, look at it. Now that was obviously in sport mode. If you put it into eco or econ, it's going to drive a little bit different, more sensitive, I will say, to get you better MPGs. Now in the comments, typically people complain about the CVT transmission, which I'm not a huge fan of the continuously variable transmission. But unless you go into Hyundai, Toyota, you're gonna have basically the same exact thing. Now, going into Hyundai, it's a six-speed automatic transmission. You're gonna have better towing capabilities, better payload, but it's not going to be as much in the MPGs. Here, you're gonna have acoustic windows for the front windscreen. The seats are more comfortable. The seat cushion itself goes almost to my knees, so my knees aren't actually sitting in the air, which that is the case for Toyota and Hyundai. And I can also use the side door panel or the center cluster if I want to rest, put it on cruise control for a long journey, I'm taken care of there. Soft materials are pretty much everywhere where it needs to be except for the armrest. It is a little bit more firm to my liking and that also is because the price goes to near $40,000, which is another con because you can't option features. You have to go up tier base in order to get features. Now this is kind of the sweet spot because you're getting almost every single feature with a discount, so it's still under 40 grand. And to go around $4,000 more to the Sport Touring Hybrid, I just don't see the value considering all of the features that you're getting in the Sport L Hybrid. Yes, I'm going to be losing the Bose upgraded sound system, the ambient lighting, the heated steering wheel, the Honda Link, which adds the navigation, but most of the people that drive vehicles use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You got it wireless and you can use Google Maps there, which is, I hate to say, a little bit more efficient. Now, putting it to B-roll is going to be similar to putting it into maybe the third or fourth for using the paddle shifters for the regenerative brakes. Turn radius is about two and a part lane. Now we're going to put it in full for the regenerative brakes. It's actually not too bad. 
I would say you're going to get it either way. You'll have a little bit of regenerative breaks. Putting into the B-roll is going to be about three to four bars, which is not necessarily too aggressive, but you will feel it whenever you let off the gas pedal. So it still has that similar one pedal feel, meaning you don't have to hit the brake all the time. But I like that you can just on the fly touch the paddles so it makes it a little bit quicker for you so you have that same feel of the one pedal. The big problem that I have with the CRV is we do not receive third row and look what we are behind, the Santa Fe, which actually competes with this and the Pilot because it's literally in between these two trims. That's a third row vehicle. Towing capacity is more. MPGs isn't bad. You're gonna have more clearance and you have more interior features in that and the pricing is very close to this. Now, when you go to the top tier for the hybrid trim, yes, you are starting to enter into Palisade money, which changes the whole ball game. But my thing is, why didn't they offer an option for a third row for the CRV? Because we have plenty of interior room for it, considering they did a refresh a few years back, which gave us more interior space, more cargo capacity, and giving us the hybrid trim. And now this year we're getting a hydrogen option. But when I'm thinking about the competition, it's in a very busy segment. Even Toyota's added more SUVs like the Crown Signia, which doesn't compete with this. The pricing is completely different. I mean, you're going to be spending north of five to $10,000 to get that example. And this is actually more comfortable, more interior space, more headroom. And for a daily practical family use vehicle, it ticks the box. That's why if I was looking to option this vehicle, I would go into the Sport L Hybrid because again, the value to it, once you start getting into the 40 grand price, there's a lot of vehicles in this segment. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Ocean Honda for giving us this 2025 Honda CRV Sport L Hybrid for our car review.